Hello and welcome to another Trove News video. Last year we did a review of the 2023 Wells to Watch in Africa. It proved to be a very popular video so we're back with Wells to Watch for 2024. This time we're bringing you our global analysis. So this year we have 40 wells compiled from a variety of sources. The details on all of these wells have been extracted from Trove databases. You might be wondering why we're only releasing this video in May. Well, subscribers get access to this insight before we release it to the general public. So if you want early access, then get in touch to find out more. So let's jump straight in. Here we have our wells to watch for 2024. We have a location, the operator and a couple of details about each one. I'm going to walk around the listing, but before I do, we can already see some trends to this. Most of the wells are in the Atlantic and most of those are in the Southern Atlantic. In Africa, we see very few high-impact wells outside of West Africa, and globally, there are few examples from onshore, with the majority actually being deep water wells. Now, we already have the results for some of these wells, so let's take a look at that. Here, we've coloured some of the boxes depending on the status. Red is dry, green is a discovery, and orange is currently drilling or a tight hole. The blue ones I'll come back to in a bit. So starting at the top, we've got three key wells drilling in Norway, including the re-drilling of Rondeslottet. The drilling of this had to be suspended last year due to technical challenges. Malcolm did a video on this well last year. There's a link in the description if you want to find out more about the geology. Now I'm not going to read all of these out, you can pause the video if you want to read a bit more about each of them. But moving on round, we can see in Cote d'Ivoire, ENI's Muren 1X well, also known as Kalau, looks to be a great success. Mike briefly covered this in a video last month. Again, the link's in the description. We'll be watching this closely and we'll provide more details when they're released. In Malaysia, we have Pakaka currently drilling. And in Indonesia, we have Harbour's follow-up wells to Timpan. We'll take a closer look at these in a second. There have been delays to Cosmos Energy's Akeng Deep because of issues with the BOP on the island Innovator Semisub. The Noble Venturer drill ship, currently in Ghana at the Jubilee Field, is now due to begin operations in Equatorial Guinea in June. Niamu, Total Energy's prospect offshore the Republic of Congo, is due to drill in mid-2024 in Block Marine 20. The key risks for this well are reservoir quality and fluid type. In the Angosh Basin, ExxonMobil will be hoping their well will be more successful than ENI's Rea well. More details on that can be found in our previous videos. Again, links are in the description. Other news from the Angosh Basin is that CNOC were awarded three deep water blocks last month in April 2024. Moving to the potentially play opening Arcturus 1 well in Angola's Namib Basin, it's expected to drill before the end of the year at a total cost of $200 million. Moving south into Namibia, we've all heard by now about the success Galp has had in Pell 83 with both Mapani 1X and 2X finding light oil. Davio 1 target had the same pressure regime in both wells, roughly 8km apart. You'll be hearing more about Mapani from us in future videos. Environmental permissions have been granted to Total Energies in both the Deepwater Orange Basin license and Block 567 in South Africa and we'll be looking for more details on the planned wells in the coming months. In March, Africa Oil announced a farm down agreement in Block 3B4B, with Total Energies becoming operator. Qatar Energy will also join the license with Africa Oil retaining 17%. There are a number of prospects here, and I'll show you some details of those in a minute. We've spoken about Pell 87 and Saturn a few times on this channel, most recently by Mike at the BIOS conference. Link is in the description if you missed that one. And I'm sure we'll cover it again, so I won't go into any details now. Subscribe to our channel if you don't want to miss out on future video updates. The Valaris DS-17 is believed to be on location to drill Equinor's highly anticipated Argarish well. This will be testing the conjugate margin to the Orange Basin where we've seen several huge discoveries in the past couple of years. So this well is definitely one to keep an eye on. Moving north and Petrobras have announced a discovery at their Anghanga well in the Pochigua Basin in northern Brazil. This follows a discovery at Pitu Uresche in the block immediately to the south earlier in 2024. In Suriname, we have the Walker 1 
prospects. We'll briefly touch on that in a minute. Moving up, Komodo is expected to drill in November offshore Colombia and follows Eco Patrol's Orca Norte gas discovery in February. In Jamaica, United Oil and Gas are seeking a partner in their Walton Morant license with the hope of drilling the Calibri prospect once a secure partner. In Mexico, the Ochcan well is expected to conclude imminently. The Books Peak well was included on the wells to watch of some other companies. However, we don't believe it's a particularly high impact well. It's targeting a well explored play. The estimated resources are good, but nothing that will turn heads when looking at the global picture. It actually spud in the back end of 2023 and results are yet to be published. In the Gulf of Mexico, Chevron's Corvus well, not showing in our wells to watch, spud in January but was announced as unsuccessful. We also have Chevron's Vancouver and Talos's Daenerys to look out for. And finally, ExxonMobil's Orphan Basin Persephone well is set to spud imminently. The Stena Drill Max drill ship is taking a break from its 35 well drilling campaign in the Starbrook block and has arrived in Canadian waters. This well is being drilled in ultra deep waters, about 500 kilometers offshore Newfoundland and Labrador. This will be a key well to watch for this year. For this to be a commercial discovery, you would expect it would have to be very sizable. So that's just done a whistle stop tour around the map of the world. If you want to have a look at this in any more detail, pause the video now. We're going to move on and talk about the three areas highlighted in blue. So starting at Halwa and Gayo in Indonesia, these were two highly anticipated wells that follow the play opening Timpan discovery and the significant Lyran discovery. We have covered both of these in previous videos. Again, links are in the description. Here's a closer look at the Andaman 2 and South Andaman blocks, and you can see Timpan, Halwa, Gaio, and Lyran all labelled up. Harbour announced the initial results in March, with Halwa described as having encountered low gas saturations, while a small gas discovery was announced at Gaio. This sounds like the wells weren't as successful as Harbour would have hoped for, however we'll wait for the full results. The rig is moving straight to the shallower Tankulo prospect in the South Andaman block before an appraisal well is drilled on Lyran. So there's still a lot to look out for here. You can also see in these cross sections and maps on the right hand side that there are other targets that haven't yet been drilled that look very similar in character to the Timpan discovery. Now looking at Walker 1, Mike covered this at the BIOS conference so we will just briefly revisit it now. The Walker 1 prospect is in block 42 offshore Suriname. Shell operates with Chevron and Hess as partners. Walker 1 is targeting a carbonate reef play similar to that of the Ranger discovery in Guyana, as you can see here on the map. You can see on the cross section the Ranger discovery in Guyana, and to the southeast the Walker prospect in Suriname. Looking at the structure maps, you can see that the target is a four way dip closure, and there is a strong similarity between Ranger and Walker. In 2019, Ranger discovered 230 foot of stocked high quality oil bearing reservoir. The pre drill estimate for Walker is roughly 250 million barrels of oil equivalent prospective resource. And finally, just a quick look at Block 3B4B, offshore South Africa. Many people don't realise that the reason we can do this analysis is because of our Trove databases. Here's an extract of the data from Trove Southern Africa. This is showing the assets within Block 3B4B alone and there's only a selection of the roughly 350 assets within the database. Also, we're only showing a handful of the data columns that we carry in Trove. Some key columns to pick out, we've got trap, reservoir, geological risk, prospective resource, we even have comments on the AVO class for these prospects. And as I say, this is just a small sample of all the data columns that we hold in Trove. If you want to get your hands on this data, get in touch and ask about our free trial. So, to summarise, has generally been a successful start to 2024, with lots more still to look out for. We'll do a review at the end of the year to see how things have progressed. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure you don't miss out on that. Let us know in the comments if you think we missed any important wells in 2024. And if you want access to this analysis months before public release, and an unrivaled technical database, and valuable insights on oil and gas assets from around the globe, then Trove is for you. Finally, good luck to all those involved in these wells, we look forward to seeing how they progress. If you enjoyed the video please like it and subscribe to the channel, and get in touch with us, either comment below or email us at info at
Thanks for watching.